Sidekick provides a public API that allows you to access real-time information about your workers, queues, and jobs. It's used for everything that the web UI can provide. If you can see it in the web UI, you can script it with the public API. We saw a little bit of it in the last couple of episodes, but now we'll dive deep. We'll be using the basic Rails application from before as our project to explore the API, but it doesn't really matter what you use. I'll kick off the Rails console. To access the API, you need to require it. We'll start out looking at the queues API. You can find all the queues Sidekick knows about, here we can see that Sidekick knows about the default queue and the mailer's queue in our Rails app. Let's look at the mailer's queue. Let's see if it has any jobs in it. So we had six jobs in our mailer's queue locally from before we told Action Mailer to just use the default queue. We don't need this queue anymore since those are stale jobs from before a change we already know about. So we could remove the queue by calling clear on it. We'll avoid that for now as I like to look at the jobs in it. We can enumerate all of the jobs. And here we can see each of the jobs was in an error state. So here's the error message. We can delete a given job by enumerating and explicitly deleting it if the job ID or JID matches the ID we want to remove. So I'll just copy this one. Let's remove this one by the job ID. Oops, I didn't set this. Hold on a second. I'll set job ID equal to that. And now we'll call mailers.each to job. And we'll call job.delete if the job's JID is equal to our job ID. Now let's look at the size. And there's five in it. You can find out a queue's latency in seconds, which is a measure of when the oldest job was enqueued. You can also explicitly find a job by its JID, though this will be inefficient if your queue is big. So let's find another JID. Call mailers.findjob. And there's that job. Finally, we can delete the queue since we don't need it to stick around. Sidekick comes with some named queues as well, related to work that's being managed by the system. Let's have a look. First up is the scheduled sorted set. It holds all scheduled jobs in chronologically sorted order. We can grab it and inspect it. Now, let's enqueue an email to be sent at a specific time in the future, using Action Mailer's Deliver Later. As expected, Deliver Later with a Wait option will place a job into the Sidekick scheduled set. You can enumerate over all of the scheduled jobs in your Sidekick system using the Enumerable interface. Consequently, you could select into them to find all of the jobs of a particular type to remove them. Let's see the class of the job we just added. All of the jobs that you initiate via active job will be of the same class, so you might want to filter them down a bit more explicitly to remove them. For now, I'll just delete them all. When a job raises an error, Sidekick places it in the retry set for automatic retry later. Jobs are sorted based on when they will next retry. You can use this API to remove jobs that you do not wish to retry again. Like retry set and scheduled set, the dead set holds all jobs considered dead by Sidekick, ordered by when they died. It supports the same basic operations as the others. Sidekick process set gets you access to near real-time info about the current set of Sidekick processes running. You can remotely control the processes also. Here we'll remotely control them, we'll tell them to get quiet, and we'll tell them to stop. Remote control can be useful in situations where signals are not supported, such as Windows, JRuby, and the JVM, or Heroku. The API also gives you programmatic access to the current active worker set for all Sidekick processes. A worker is defined as a thread currently processing a job. This is live data that changes every millisecond. If size returns 5, it in no way suggests that enumerating the workers will result in a block being called 5 times. If you try to rely on that sort of thing, you will have errors in your code. So I've actually already added some work um, using a worker that just actually sits around for forever because otherwise it just churns through it very quickly. So we already have some workers. We can list some information about them.
So here you can see the information that you get through those uh, arguments to your block. You can also look at various stats about your Sidekick installation, like how many jobs you've processed, or how many jobs have failed, or what queues you have. You can also get the number of jobs in queued in all your queues, and this does not include retries and scheduled jobs. Sidekick's API gives you detailed access to the history of your Sidekick installation. All dates are UTC, and history stats are cleared after five years. Here, we'll get the history of failed and processed stats, going back two days starting from today. You can start from a different date. This was a brief overview of Sidekick's Ruby API. In the resources section, I've linked to the wiki page about the API as well as the RDocs for all of the classes in the API. If you want to dig in further, it's all there for the reading. See you soon!